Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add images to our blog post as well as allowing to edit a blog post. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go to our data models application user and we are going to add in a attribute called personal data just to indicate that these properties are personal data. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to rename our create blog view model inside of our main project and then models and then blog view model we're going to rename this to just create view model okay so it's inside blog view models and it's called create view model okay um, and because we rename that uh, we will need to go to our blog create view where we use that model because IntelliSense can't really pick this up inside of a CS HTML file we just have to come in here and manually change it and that's fine okay that's all the cleanup I wanted to do now we can get started all right so now let's add the ability for a user to upload an image when they create a blog. So inside of the create view model, right, we're going to add a iform file. And we're also going to say this thing is required Bring in data annotations. And we're going to give it a more friendly name for display. So name equals header image. Now we can go to our create view. So blog create. Okay. We can add in. In addition to that, down here in our scripts, we're going to have to add in some jQuery and JavaScript to add in that label. So this is something I found on the interwebs. So that takes care of our create view. Now inside of our blog business manager. Okay, so in here, we're going to want to actually store our image on our, uh, within our web root path. So to get that, we'll first need to inject web host environment. So let's do that. Now within our create blog method, we need to change this up a little bit instead of just going straight to returning from the add. Let's do blog equals return blog here for now. Okay, so now we've added the blog and this blog now contains an ID from the database. So from that, we can build our path to where this image is going to live. So first let's get the web root path. And what that points us to is this right there. Okay, so now let's actually build our path to the image. inject some variables in this string. The first one's going to be uh, the web root path. 
that we created. And then um, I'm going to put it inside of a folder called user files. And that's an escape character, so to get around that, let's just uh, add the at sign. And that will escape all the escape characters for us. So user files, I'm going to say blogs. Now here's where we'll throw in the ID. So a blog ID. Okay, and then let's just give the header image a default name of header image of JPEG. One thing I always like to do is create a, a method to ensure the folder exists. Back up in our create blog method, we can just call that. And now, finally, we'll implement a using. So we'll say using Since we changed the name of this, I'm going to also change the name of the variable. Let's hop on over to our app services, configuration app services. And in here, we're going to add the file provider service. We see header image, so we can select a file, throw in a title, and submit it. Okay, so uh, we created something, and if we go to our root folder, yes. So we see user files, blogs, the ID of the blog that was created, and then the header image, which is the one I selected. Okay, so I'm going to recommend that we all clear our blogs table in the database. And then the next section, we will begin uh, creating our dashboard within the admin controller to display the blogs that we've written and then we'll work on editing those blogs. So let's start by creating a business manager because if you remember inside of our admin controller, we're currently just returning a view, uh, no logic going on in here. Alright, and before we forget, let's hop on over to our configuration app services and let's add it in here. Uh, let's go into view models, so models, uh, let's create a new folder called admin view models. And a new class called uh, this will be index view model. Uh, for now, 
inside of our index view or our dashboard we're just going to add in um, the ability to list out the blogs that we've created okay um, now inside of our admin business manager what we can do is we're going to create a method to get back our blog so uh, public async task and um, we're returning that index view model so from our admin view models that we just created and uh, let's just call it uh, get admin dashboard for now we're gonna need the claims principal so that we know who we are and that should be it for the signature use threading and then um, inside of this we need to get our application user and we're going to get it from our claims principal if you remember we need our user manager to do that so now we can use it so we'll say um, we're grabbing our application user wait Okay, so now we have our application user, and just for now, um, let's just, just to satisfy this error, let's just return new index view model. Okay, and we'll fill that in uh, shortly. Currently in our blog service, we we only have a method to add a blog so we're going to create a method for getting blogs and um, we will pass in the application user and only get blogs uh, via the user so Okay, and here is where uh, Entity Framework Core comes in. So we'll say include. We'll have to bring in this, and we're saying uh, this takes a uh, lambda, which uh, blog dot creator. So we're saying when you grab a blog, include the creator. Okay, so in the database, it stores this application user as just the ID of the application user inside this blog. So what Entity Framework Core does is when you use this include, it goes and grabs the all the data associated with that application user inside of the table. So it doesn't just return an ID, it actually populates the application user object. So we're going to do the same thing blog on the approver. And finally, we also are going to include the posts. All right. And then we're going to say this is where we're going to use link expression here. And we're going to say blog where the blog creator is equal to application user. And let's add that to our interface. Now we can actually make a call to this. Back in our admin business manager, we need to inject the blog service Uh, 
Okay, and then down in here. Now we can take this signature and drop it in our interface. We can actually call this method from our controller. So hop over here and instead of just returning view, we're going to return that index view model. So we need to inject our business manager. So So this method is asynchronous, so that means we're going to have to make this a async task my action results. And then inside of this view, I'm just going to say await. The last thing we want to do on the admin controller for now is above the controller we'll just say authorize. Now that will restrict any actions within the admin controller to people who are logged in. We're gonna go to our data models blog and we're gonna add in another field underneath this created on. And we're gonna call it updated on. Okay, so so now we can just go into our index view, use mn index. We're going to just wipe everything out of there. Start fresh. All right, and I have, um, I've already created some, some HTML uh, to display the blogs in, you know, a, a pretty way that I liked. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it in here. You can pause the video and copy it as you wish. Another thing we need to do real quick is inside of our blog business manager, we're going to add in the updated on, just set that by default to now. Because we've updated our blog model, we need to run another migration. So now we're going to work on allowing the user to edit the blog. Uh, we're just going to kind of start at the end and then work our way backwards. So we'll start inside the service. So we want to get a blog. We want to get that blog based on an ID. So I think, all right, I'm going to move this down not absolutely necessary I just like to order mine a specific way so I'm gonna add in a method uh, public we're returning a blog and get blog we're taking in an ID okay to get this blog we're just simply saying uh, application DB context blogs dot and let's do uh, first or default. Whoops. Where blog um, ID is equal to blog ID. That's all we need. Uh, we'll grab this signature. So when we are going to let a user edit a blog, we really want to think about security. So we're going to implement some authorization checks here. Um, 
so the first thing we want to do is go into our main project we're going to add a folder called authorization and then inside this folder we'll add a new class and uh, we're going to create a blog authorization handler all right and this thing is going to inherit from an authorization handler authorization handler which comes from ASP.NET Core authorization and we're going to pass in two items to this we're going to pass in an operational or operation authorization requirement and a blog whoops blog okay All right so when we inherit from this we need to implement a specific um, method here so go ahead and do that and we have this handle requirement async takes in a context authorization handler context to be exact takes in this operation authorization requirement in our blog which is a resource um, so we're going to create a class all right all right so we're creating a class called operations and this will be a uh, st static class from the Microsoft documentation we can use this for our crud operations so uh, I got this straight from the Microsoft documentation so you can bring this in as needed so we have a requirement for each operation called so uh, we have create read update delete and we set the name of them to be the name of the operation itself so now that we have this inside of our handler what we can do is uh, first We also want to check if we are the correct user, the owner or creator of this blog. So um, one, one thing we'll need to do is actually get the application user. So we're going to have to inject that. Above this, now we can get our user. Because this is, uh, we're waiting here, we need to make this asynchronous. Okay, so now we have our application user. And now we can add in the second check here. So. Then we'll say context dot succeed the requirement. We do need to jump into our app services. We'll add a new method for specifically for authorization. then um, because we added it to this new method I'm gonna go to my startup file so in order to edit our blog 
uh, let's create a view model so blog so we have our create view model add a class called edit view model okay and this is going to be pretty much the same as our create view model with small difference now the only difference we're going to do here is on the edit we're going to make it to where the header image is not required let's hop on over to our blog business manager so we want to get the blog and then return that view model so let's add in a method for this this time we're gonna do something a little bit different we're gonna hand back an action result with our edit view model and we're doing this because we're gonna do some checks some validation on the item and then we'll hand back things like bad request result a not found result things like that so let's start off with taking an ID for a blog uh, but we'll make it um, nullable so int ID and we'll also take in our claims principle the first thing we're gonna do is check for our ID if the ID is null uh, we'll return bad request now let's get our blog at this point we know an ID has been passed in so let's use that ID to get the blog so now let's check because maybe they threw in a number that there is no blog for okay so where we created our handler for the blog we're going to use that and check our if we're authorized and we need the authorization service Wait authorization service dot authorize async and um, here we just pass in the claims principle. Let's see. Let's resource and then requirement. So our requirement will be operations dot update. So once we have this authorization result, we can now check. If it did not succeed, we're going to return either a forbid result or a challenge result. However, if it did succeed and we make it this far, then we'll just simply return the view model. Return new edit view model. Okay. Whoops. And the blog will equal, say it equals to blog. So now inside of this blog controller, we can add a method for editing. And let's uh, call our blog business manager the method that we just created. So because we're getting back either an action result of say, bad request result which is a type of action result or 
um, you know, this or this or this, or we end up returning the action result of edit view model. We need to do something special in here. We need to, let's actually name this action result. Let's do a check. We'll say if action result, oops, action result dot, we're going to check if the result is null. And if it is null, we'll say return view result dot value. Nope. Action result dot value. Okay, so we're saying if we didn't get a result back, we're successful. Let's return that view with the edit view model inside of it. Okay, however, if the result was not null, that means we got back one of these guys. Okay, so what we're going to do in that case is just simply. And what that's going to do is tell them access denied or not found, forbidden, whatever the case was. Uh, let's actually implement um, the ability to update. Inside of our blog service, similar to our method uh, we have for add, we want something to update. Let's copy this, rename it to update. Okay. We're going to call the update method. So let's take this to our blog service and add that in there. Okay. Save it. Now inside of our blog business manager, we can do the same with async task. First thing we'll do is get the blog because we don't want to just trust the blog that's sent in. Okay, so we'll say var. Let's check if it's null. Now let's check on the the authorization. So we'll say the same thing we did here. And then uh, we'll also need to do the same thing we did here. So uh, let's actually create a private method. And here we can just say return Determine action result. Oops. Oops. Okay. And then likewise here we can do the same thing. Now at this point we know we're authorized, so let's update the blog. This time the header image is optional. So let's do a check on whether or not they uploaded a header image. Here we'll say return new edit view model where blog is equal to await blog service dot update blog. Now, 
back in our controller, we can add another post method. Now we just need to actually create our uh, view. So jump over to views um, and then blog and we'll create edit. So add view. Edit. Okay, and this is going to be. Um, quite similar to our create. So I'm gonna copy this over and then change a few things. We're doing a edit view model. Oh, okay, we don't need this. This is left over from when I was trying something other than the uh, CK editor, so you can safely remove that which means we can also remove it from here okay. now we're not creating a blog we're editing one we are not adding we are updating it we're not writing a post edit this Okay, we also need to take in the ID. So just inside of the form, I'm gonna put input um, ASP4 equals, and we say blog.id. And we want this to be read-only as well as hidden. So let's go to our app service where we make this a singleton. Let's change it to transients. Okay, let's write out. We see it's updated and published. Okay. Um, last updated on is not correct, so we need to fix that. Oh. Well, duh. I don't want to do take it after that. I want to set it to now. Date time dot. Okay, so updated on, right? Everything looks great.